So in part one uh, of this lecture series focusing on the foreign policy of USSR, we were talking about uh, Khrushchev times and other incidents that uh, infuriated uh, Khrushchev during his uh, tenure was the U-2 case uh, when an American uh, uh, aircraft American surveillance aircraft flew uh, in the skies of Soviet Union and trying to carry out uh, trying to carry out surveillance and it really infuriated uh, Khrushchev and he had to face a lot of resistance from the hawks in the Soviet administration because he was trying to sort of hobnob with the western world he was trying to normalize relation with the western world and trying to give an impression that Soviet Union no longer uh, wish to bring about a bloody revolution and uh, more or less he was trying to uh, admit that uh, let's maintain a status quo if you have a certain sphere of influence let it be in your uh, under your domination and if Soviet Union has some uh, areas under its dominance so let those areas be under uh, the influence of Soviet Union. So U-2 incident was famous and uh, interestingly the aircraft flew from Pakistan. Uh, some historian believe that it flew from Peshawar, Badabed and the pilot was caught and in Moscow court uh, uh, he is said to have confessed that he flew from Pakistan and it also uh, strained relationship between Pakistan and Soviet Union and Pakistani leadership was very nervous somehow uh, Soviet Union did not take revenge uh, uh, for that incident but of course it created a great mistrust between uh, the, the Western capitalist world and uh, um, the Soviet Union under Khrushchev that was trying to normalize relation with the Western world and then uh, during the decade of 90s more or less tension existed uh, which culminated into Cuban crisis missiles and uh, that really jeopardized the security of the world. And uh, But during all that time, Soviet Union directly or indirectly uh, kept on supporting uh, a revolution uh, all over the world, though it was not very vehement. During 60s, uh, more or less, the Soviet Union kept on supporting revolution in different parts of Africa and uh, it also continued support uh, uh, pro-Soviet government here and there. Uh, at the same time, uh, one of the point of the Soviet Union was to protect itself against American uh, modern weapons and its satellite states. So uh, they had earlier formed Warsaw Pact which was an alliance of the uh, communist or socialist states and NATO was the rival of Warsaw. So they continued it and at uh, uh, one point force was also used against Hungary and uh, uh, the interventionist policies or uh, interfere, the policies of interference in the affairs of other socialist states also created acrimony between Soviet Union and uh, and other Western, other other Eastern European or Central European countries, like at one point Yugoslavia, at another point Hungary, and uh, uh, such problems also existed. So during the Khrushchev time, Khrushchev time had been very turbulent in a sense that uh, uh, Cuban uh, Cuban missiles crisis took place during that time and uh, but it is also unique in the sense uh, that communist world uh, you know uh, witness a sort of rift and China accused uh, in a way Khrushchev of betraying revolution and China uh, was offended when Khrushchev criticized Stalin and his policy and when the Chinese said, uh, um, when Chinese said to Khrushchev that he should not have criticized Stalin, they were reminded that Stalin was a Russian and it was Russian internal matter. And the Chinese retorted that he was not the leader of Russia, but he was the leader of international communist movement. So it created a rift uh, during Khrushchev time a rift was created between Russia and China 
and uh, many people believe that it was a big blow to international communist movement because it not only uh, the division was not confined between Moscow and Beijing but it spread to other parts of the world and uh, there were pro-Chinese and pro, uh, uh, pro-Russian or Soviet uh, communist parties in various parts of the world and they badly affected the international communist movement. So Khrushchev times, uh, although at one point Soviet foreign policy tried to normalize relation with the Western world, on the other hand, it continued supporting uh, pro-Soviet regimes and anti-West movements. It did not, however, vigorously support revolution. It did not militarily uh, intervene the way uh, red troops intervene in other parts of the world, especially in Central and Eastern Europe uh, during the time of Stalin. Uh, during the time of Khrushchev, he did make some West, uh, he did make some intervention. But uh, what was unique point during his time was his uh, was his move to normalize relation with the Western world. And then, then we have this command of Brezhnev, which more or less continued. Uh, again, it denounced some of the policies of Stol- uh, some of the policies of Khrushchev because every leader tried to carve out uh, his own sphere of influence, and he somehow uh, took harder line. Uh, arms race continued between the Soviet Union and uh, and the United States, and the intervention in the Afghanistan more or less also happened during his time and uh, uh, he also continued supporting uh, pro-Soviet regimes in different parts of the world and pro-Soviet movement in Africa and elsewhere and of course there was a popular resistance during his time against the Vietnam War and uh, anti-war movement that was uh, supported by the Soviet Union, especially in the, in the, in the Western world. And then finally we had uh, the time of Gorbachev, who again tried to uh, normalize relation with the Western world. And he tried to liberalize economy, he tried to uh, grant some political freedoms. But after liberalizing economy, the prices of essential commodities skyrocketed. Uh, prompting people to take to the street and opposing communist rule. He also withdrew troops from Soviet uh, from, from Afghanistan. And in a way, foreign, Soviet foreign policy appeared to be more non-interventionist. And uh, he even went to the extent of uh, permitting the breaking of the Berlin Wall he uh, also Soviet foreign policy sought to demilitarize world and denuclearize and uh, a number of crucial uh, treaties especially arms reduction treaties were signed during Soviet uh, during Gorbachev time and he also tried to uh, uh, try to reduce Soviet military power because he realized that if you pump more money into arms it's not going to benefit people and uh, it's not going to uh, it's not going to help people so that's why he signed a number of treaty uh, uh, with the western world aimed at reducing uh, arms he also sought to uh, uh, put an end to this star war program but reagan was crazy and uh, sorry but reagan was uh, determined to um, carry on uh, to to continue that uh, that program and uh, finally his uh, economic and liberal reforms they led to the demise of the soviet union and uh, after 1991 or to be precise perhaps january 1992 soviet union disappeared from the map of the world and uh, all the states emerge as independent state and what used to be Soviet Union, a mighty empire, 
uh, was reduced to one country which is known as Russia now.